After a week off, Cannon Fodder returns with a look at the Firefight update, RTX, and more, so let's dive in. Dropping with the Firefight update last week was the new Attack on Sanctum Warzone scenario, which included, to the surprise and delight of many, including our very own Covenant Cannon, the return of Jewel Umdama. It was also a bittersweet reunion for many in the lore community, considering the Sangheili's untimely demise. Still, his return is generally welcome, and interestingly, killing this particular simulation is a much sought after honor among Spartan 4s, especially veterans of their Requiem campaign. Art imitating life, it would seem. Moving forward, we get a bit of a review of RTX. The highlight for those of us who couldn't attend was obviously the Halo panel last Saturday, watchable here, but for those who attended, there was a lot more to enjoy. One of these years. Another highlight of RTX was the reveal of more details about the upcoming Halo Legendary crate. Many details remain a mystery, but one thing that was revealed was the inclusion of several Halo icon figures, such as this Red vs. Blue statuette. That's Red vs. Blue in general, not the show. Anyway, the various sets that will come with the crates will be customizable with removable figures and connecting bases. It's certainly a kind of collectible I'll be looking forward to. Further, there are fictional elements tied to the crates. If you've signed up for the crate or followed the details since it was announced, the name Fireteam Apollo may sound familiar. This is a canon fireteam with its own story, in a similar vein to Fireteam Crimson from Spartan Ops. The story of Apollo will unfold with the release of each new crate and, according to Grimm, perhaps beyond. While I'm already excited for all the gear the crates will include, the prospect of Fireteam Apollo only adds to my excitement. According to Grimm, we can look forward to mission briefs and dossiers to catch us up on the state of the universe and learn of legendary missions from the past. Crate subscribers will also gain a special Halo 5 emblem and designation on Halo Waypoint. Lots to be excited about, for sure. And on top of all of that, the first crate will contain a preview for a story from the upcoming Halo Fractures anthology. You can bet I'll be sharing all these details when it releases. Moving forward, yesterday saw the release of the second Halo Heroes Megablox animated adventure. While the last one focused on Buck, this new one features a funny little tale about Spartan Vale. Now, funny story, when this came out, the first question I asked, as you might expect, was whether or not these were canon. That led to a rather humorous response from Grimm, which carried over into canon fodder, much to my own amusement. By the way, I'm going to take this as a yes, Grimm. But in all seriousness, canon or not, the shorts are entertaining, and I'd recommend checking them out, even if failed it somehow use the new Forge glitch to make our plasma pistol and SMG into shotguns. Yeah. Our final section today is a community question asking where Ungoy are getting the Blamite for the Goblin Mechs if the mysterious crystalline material only comes from the Sankhelios moon of Suban. In short, the Covenant kept huge stores of the material that were ripe for the picking when the Empire collapsed. Further, not all Subanese mining operations are 100% loyal to the Swords of Sanghelios or even to the Sanghili. So, the Ungoy have a few options for securing a healthy supply of Blamite. And that wraps up the article itself. This week's universe entry is an update to Julum Dama's article. During the latter third of the Human Covenant War, Julum Dama was shipmaster of the ORS class heavy cruiser, Blight of the Profane. When the war ended, Jewel remained skeptical of human intent and wanted to finish the job the Covenant started, hoping to make sure they couldn't threaten the Sanghili in the future. Jewel soon found himself associating with the Servants of the Abiding Truth, a pre-Covenant religious sect that opposed the Arbiter. Unfortunately, he was later captured by Oni. During his imprisonment, he was held at Shieldworld Travellion and experimented on. This, and later finding out his wife had been killed by humans, only deepened Jewel's hatred for the species. He was luckily able to escape and, by chance, found himself on the Sanghili colony of Hesturos. The colony had lost contact with the Covenant prior to the Great Schism and had legends about a forerunner known as the Didact who also held a grudge against humanity. Taking advantage of the colony's still fervent beliefs, Jewel began a radical resurrection of the Covenant intent on finding Requiem and the Didact. Following the events of Halo 4, Jewel and his Covenant began raiding Requiem for all it was worth, eventually focusing on an artifact known as the Librarian's Rest. In an attempt to collect what he could, Joel managed to capture first Dr. Henry Glassman, and later Dr. Catherine Halsey. Just as Halsey unlocked the secrets of the Librarian's Rest, Fireteam Majestic and Spartan Palmer broke into Joel's base. Halsey, who had been given two halves of the Janus Key, managed to get one half into Majestic's hands. The other half and Halsey herself were taken by Joel. Spartan Palmer attempted to kill Halsey to deny Joel a valuable asset, but failed. Soon after, Jewel activated Requiem's failsafe program, which would send it flying into Epilogue, the local sun, hoping to send the UNSC Infinity with it. 
He took Halsey with him when he left, and the two formed a strenuous relationship as they sought to recover the other half of the Janus Key and access the Absolute Record. Ultimately, the two were successful. At the Absolute Record, Halsey had to face off against Henry Glassman and a group of Spartans for control of the record, but Halsey, somehow, hacked the installation's monitor and took control. She attempted to betray Jewel and use the installation to begin the reclamation, but was thwarted when Glassman and the Spartans reactivated the site's monitor. Jewel recovered Halsey unaware of her betrayal and laid siege to the local facility. The two groups barely escaped as the installation seemed to evaporate around them. Just over a month later on the frozen world of Kamchatka, Jewel met his end at the hands of Spartan Jameson Locke and Fireteam Osiris when they were sent to recover Dr. Halsey. Now he only lives on in simulation. And that does it for today. Hope you enjoyed the latest cannon fodder, and until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.